you got involved with music um, at a very young age. Mm-hmm. Um, so how did that come about? Um, I just always um, loved to sing. And, uh, you know, I remember being a wee little kid and we had this uh, pennant and she came upstairs and said, you know, what was that on the radio? And, and my mom said, oh, that was Lori singing, right? Now, I look back, maybe she did it on purpose. <laughs> but it was really, I was about six at the time. So it was encouraging, right? Just, I just always, always loved to sing. I think when I was about 14, you know, I was a bit of a juvenile delinquent. And, uh, you know, we had to do this essay in um, English about what we would like to do when we grow up. You know, we're older, and I, I had put down uh, definitely singer. And I think, no, I think I started singing professionally the first day I was about 18 years old. So I wasn't a child prodigy, but, and I remember thinking that I was old. You know, 18 was old. I'm like, man, I got to get on. <laughs> yeah. You bet. So you said you, had, you were a bit of a juvenile delinquent. And on your but on your website you say um, that you overcame some personal addictions and you and you now do things such as volunteering on a suicide hotline. Can you yeah. could t- speak a little more about that? Oh well, you know I'm uh, I'm a person that uh, you know has have battles with addiction issues. I've been uh, clean and sober for about, I think coming up to twenty three years now, and I I think I've had. Uh, three day jobs that have always somehow uh, been involved in mental health, right? You know, I didn't go to school for that. I, uh, I, was, I was really the kid that quit school early and worked in the gas station because I wanted to do music as a career as well. But um, I have worked in mental health, kind of fell into these jobs, right? So, you know, where I work now, it's not volunteer, though. I get paid for it. I still have crisis worker in Toronto at a, a very busy uh, suicide meeting. It's, it's a mental health crisis center, so it's, um, you know, I've kind of <clears throat> been in the closet a little bit with both those issues in my life for a long time. Like, I wasn't one that kind of wanted to sober up and really go, hey, you know, I'm sober, and look at me. I really kept that quite quiet, <clears throat> as well as the, the kind of day job work that I do. Um, but, but I felt that, like, reading my bio lately, I, I thought, well, it's just really boring, because if you don't tell anything personal, of interest, then people don't have a connection to you, right? So when I was reading my bio, I was like, well, you know, she's been here, she's been there, she's been there. But it was all very surface. And I felt like I just had to share uh, some more intimate parts of myself with folks at this point. I felt comfortable doing that. Now, your bio said that you once you tried stand-up comedy at one point. And I'm wondering what's tougher, stand-up comedy or standing up and singing your own songs? Oh, stand-up comedy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <By far. laughs> I, I did. I got asked to do it about well, two years ago. You know, I used to be pretty shy on stage. I could always say, but I never knew what to say to people, right? And I think that's, that's often the case with young performers. You know, you, you may have your vocal voice, but you don't necessarily have your stage voice, what you're going to say to people. So I, you know, I used to play with guys, and I came, kind of came up in the, the punk era of, like, be cool, you know, hang back, be cool. And, and I used to try and be cool on stage, and I... I just would end up not saying anything. Like, I, I, get, I would get stymied, right? So one day, um, something just went off in my head, and I just started to talk. And I just started to talk. And I just was like, whatever can I do? Sometimes it was inappropriate. Sometimes I swear. Sometimes it's funny. Sometimes it's not. Um, and once I did that, it, I, I felt completely free. Right? I felt like, okay, I have nothing to fear. I have nothing to prove. Um, I can kind of say whatever I want within reason. And... And I'll land on my feet. So having done that, I found I, I've never set up to be funny, right? I always think, oh my God, I kiss the death out with me. You know, I'm going to be funny. But a friend of mine, who's a comedian named Shelly Marshall, who she's been to my shows and she's had me on her shows as a performer, as a singer, called me up one day and said, uh, hey, you know, I think you should boost your, your, your uh, stand-up cherry on my show. And I was like... What? It was, it was as if a bolt of lightning went through my body. Like, I was terrified. But I thought, you know, just being scared of something at this point is not a good enough reason to think of it, right? And so, well, what's the worst thing that can happen? So, you know, I, I, she gave me a little bit of training, like literally five minutes worth. I came up with a routine. On I went. Uh, as I stood side stage waiting to go on, I'm watching all these very few and the comedian, and I'm thinking, and I'm 
You went to Nashville and you met the the hung out with the likes of Johnny Cash and Tammy Wynette and Wright Acuff and stuff and so on. What sticks in your mind most about those days? Well, it was really a magical time, and I think that um, it was the tail end of an era in Nashville that was soon to be over because a lot of people were passing away, right? I had an A and R guy named Larry Handy who, you know, at the time I didn't really realize what he was doing, but he was kind of helping to introduce me to all these, like, old guard in Nashville. And, you know, sh shortly after that time, not too long after, Tommy Lynette was gone, Harlan Howard was gone, right? like, all of them, right? But I sort of got to meet them right at the end. So it was, a, it was sort of, a, it, like, that was, that was the, the Nashville that I loved. It's older than me, you know, probably, like, from the 40s to the 60s, right, in country music, maybe in the 60s. Uh, yeah, so it was, it was just a magical time. So now, uh, where you're at now, how, how do you, are you happy with your, your career? And, you know, what does, the, what does the immediate future hold for you? Um, I am really happy. This new record um, is been doing game busters for me, um, you know, on a, it, it's me. I'm I'm an independent artist. I'm not signed with anyone, so it, it makes for busy work for me. But I'm, I'm quite happy to do it. I've gotten a ton of airplay around the world, right? Because of you know now things have changed so much with the internet and YouTube that it enables an artist like me to you know have airplay. Like I just got an email um, from a DJ in Austria. Can you send me a couple of copies? Um, and all that's possible, uh, whereas a few years ago it wasn't, right? That, you know, you need to be with a, a label and, and have a big machine behind you. And, and I, I have done that. And it's great for exposure. I don't know what else it's great for. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's great for, like, you know, being with Sony, being with Virgin. I made one record with Sony, two records with Virgin. Both were um, great records. All three were great records. Uh, they have a promotional team that I don't have on my own in my own home office. Um, however, I have to say I've probably made more money on my own, you know. So I'm, I've had pretty good exposure with this one. Um, you know, have a bit of a busy summer, you know, coming up. Not as, not as busy as I'd like, I'll be honest with that. But, uh, but I'm happy with where it's at. And I'm looking at probably, I'm supposed to go back in the studio tomorrow. So, you know, I'm, I'm one that put, takes gaps in between, right? No. So, at this time, I'm not going to. I, I probably I have a whack of songs. I'm just going to knock them, knock them off again. Probably the next couple of years will be very prolific for me. I hope. We should mention your your the latest record, which is Sweetheart of the Valley, right? Yes. yes okay. Yeah. Sweetheart of the Valley, folks. So here's a here's a question: If you could form a band with any musicians in the world, which musicians would you choose? Wow. That's a nobody ever asked me that one. <laughs> um, hmm. That's really interesting. Oh my gosh. Well, I think I might have to have. Can they be dead too? Or just. Uh, <laughs> sure, why not? Why not? Let's make them oh. dead or alive. Dead or alive or just alive? Dead or alive. Okay, dead or alive. Um, well, I probably would have. I would love to have, be in a band with um, Alison Krauss, Joan Jett, 
maybe Robert Plant. These are all singers, right? So you know, I need some other Basil Donovan from Blue Rodeo who played on my record. Definitely the best bass player in the world, probably. Actually, you know, it's funny you say that, and I think, okay, you know, anybody, anybody. But, you know, it's the people that I've had relationships with, right, that I know they're playing the best that I would probably name first, yeah. which would be yeah. the Baxter and Michelle Joseph, like, who played on my record. But they kind of do exactly what I hear in my head, right? You know, I'd love to work with Buddy Miller. She won't bring that. love to work with him. All right. Um, now, have you have you pl- you played Mariposa before? I have. Oh, okay. So you're looking forward to it? I am. Yeah, 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 yeah totally. Yeah. I think it was like '93, and I hosted Mariposa with Bill Hartley. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, 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 yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for this. Awesome. 